What is up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here, and this is going to be for me the last album review for 2019, and this is going to be for me my last review for the Iron Maiden discography. Now I know some of you guys may be asking me, Strong Boys, the Book, the Book of, of Souls, Souls came, came out after, after this album five, five years later. later. Well, I mentioned it a few times now that I had already reviewed The Book of Souls. I have reviewed the album when it came out with one of my friends, Logan. So check out that review if you haven't already. I'm going to dive into this album that was released in the new decade, the 2010s, called The Final Frontier. Now, The Final Frontier is a very interesting album because Steve Harris was thinking about material that was heavily presentable and big for science fiction and space and time themes. And I know that Somewhere in Time has a lot of that in already, but The Final Frontier, with its lyricism to the sound of the band, with this kind of music, it is something different. Even though that it got positive reception when it came out, but later on over time, some of the fans would regard this as a great album or as not one of their best albums. When I had first listened to The Final Frontier, I was not really digging into what's going on and it didn't really fulfill my expectations. But the more I listened to this album, it started to grow on me so much more. I wouldn't really celebrate this as one of the top greatest albums in Maiden's discography. The Final Frontier can be a record that may be indifferent for many Maiden fans. Kevin Shirley did the production to this album and I absolutely love this production. It is excellent. It is one of the best produced albums that he had done since Brave New World and I would say that this sound of the production is better than the previous two albums. The Final Frontier opens with Satellite 15 to The Final Frontier. Satellite 15 is basically the introduction that opens with robotic noises and the sound of the band came in after that. But the intro goes on too long. It went on for four and a half minutes until the actual song of The Final Frontier comes in. And the music to this song sounds decent. It's, for me, like, rock-based very effectively. The chorus is pretty good, but it's not a dramatic opener to start the album, and I wouldn't think of it as a mind-blower. But it's a neat one to start this album, despite the dragging introduction. Single El Dorado pops in the anticipating guitar riffs, and the hook was great. And for Bruce's vocals, he went into some mid-range, a little bit of spoken word-ish kind of delivery. The instrumentation to me is a better fit. The chorus was brilliant. I really like this track, and the tone is fantastic. Mother of Mercy, very sweet, clean tones in the beginning, with a theatrical approach, at least in my opinion, on Bruce's singing, and the pace was controlled. After that, the sound of the song was moodier and darker. The vocals, unfortunately, feel strained on the chorus, and the notes didn't shine through that strongly. It's not a bad song, but the structure was decent. Coming Home opens the song with twin guitars, and the sound of the track starts intriguing. There are some very sweet, gentle vibes before the distorted tone comes in afterwards. The music feels progressive in spots, and it sounds like traditional Maiden music from the 1980s, and I really enjoy this one a lot. The Alchemist, one of the faster tracks, and it's awesome right from the start. It transcends to a heavier sound of the musicianship, like the previous Maiden material, say, like a few from the album Power Slave, and they've still got it 
with their menacing sound from the drumming to the guitar work that was powerful. It is another one that stands out for me as one of the best songs on here from its brilliant sound. Isle of Avalon to me is my least favourite. Sound of the Wind comes in from the introduction with the hi-hat that was controlling the pace with the guitars and the bass, but the song with its build-up goes on really long that it feels tiring and repetitive over time. It didn't flow into something really changeable for the better. Then the whole band drives in after the close to three minute mark. That's really one of the issues with the album and I do respect what they did for this album but I feel some of the introductions would go on in a really dragging repetitive way possible that it kind of lost me on some of these feelings that I had when I was trying to intrigue myself to the music. The keyboards come in in some spots and with the various changes in the solos, I find it meandering didn't really grab me so the Isle of Avalon is my least favourite on the record. Starblind is really good, the instrumentation had a powerful delivery and the vocals were awesome on this song. The chorus was powerful in itself, there were layers of multiple guitar licks and the keyboards to this song sound chilling and dramatic. The Talisman opens with the beautifully played acoustic guitars as it brings some touching atmosphere. The lower range from Bruce's singing suits and I really like how he sounds on the acoustic parts. It's like that he is telling a tale to the audience and the listeners. The entire band instantly bursts through after the 2 minute 20 mark. It takes me back to some of the songs from Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Vocals at some points were a bit pushed on some of the higher registered notes. To me, this is another amazing song as it is one of the favourites. The Man Who Would Be King starts on the ambient-ish driven tone with the lead guitar work and the soft vocals. Then the song builds up that feels big with the riffs that were edgy and the stylistic drumming from Nico was amazing on this track. The melodies were wicked and the tempo changes as well to the song being an uplifting, explorative vibe. Memorable stuff from what I think. This track is very good. Then the album finishes with the best one out of the entire bunch with When the Wind Blows. The highlight and the longest track, which is 11 minutes of another incredible piece of music in terms of just closing tracks as a whole with many of the other ones that were just epics and masterpieces. Song is an experience. It's very much like a progressive epic and the sound was fantastic, full of atmosphere, beautiful with its instrumentation and it does fulfill myself with its intensity as the song goes on and I really love the melody on the lines from the guitars to the bass that connects with the vocals. One of the strongest tracks Iron Maiden had ever made. The Final Frontier, besides some of its flaws, that's another thing that a lot of people complained about on Bruce's vocals. I do give Bruce so much respect, and obviously this was Bruce at an older age, but for the most part he really gave it all that he got and nailed a lot of the songs on here. The musicianship was really great and the guitar solos were phenomenal, and I do admit that The Final Frontier would still be an album that would divide some Maiden fans, but I would say The Final Frontier is a very enjoyable album. So I'm going to give The Final Frontier by Iron Maiden a 7.5 out of 10. And please let me know what you think of this album in the comments below. That is it for me. 
to conclude my Iron Maiden discography with The Final Frontier and I will be doing my list of ranking their entire discography very very soon in the new year so I'll make a video for that really soon. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.